In this lecture, I will present uh, the methods used for solving partial differential equations in Mathematica. There are two such methods, one for analytical solutions, d-solve, and the other uh, for numerical solutions called nd-solve. So in the first example, which is actually really a an ordinary differential equation, but a boundary value problem, we consider heat conduction in a rod which is non-uniformly heated. So we're heating along the rod with a heat source which is this function Q sub f, um, which I'm going to plot here so that you can see what it looks like. So I'm heating in the middle of the rod a lot and I'm heating on the ends of the rod not very much. And the rod is conducting, um, it spans from x equals 0 to x equals 1, and it is going to have a fixed temperature at the two ends. It's held in some sort of big heat sink. So the particular conditions of this uh, differential equation are that there's local heat transfer uh, from the rod to the surrounding air with a certain heat transfer coefficient. That's this term here. The rod is a temperature T of x, uh, which I'm writing with respect to the surrounding air, so that this heat transfer term is, instead of being T sub x minus T zero, is just T sub x. And then here is the heat source. So the origin of an equation like this is a subject for a heat transfer course but the solving of it is something that can be done here in Mathematica. So here's the differential equation. Here are the two boundary conditions that the temperature on the two ends of the rod is clamped to being the ambient temperature and since I'm measuring temperature with respect to ambient that is zero. Here's the unknown function and here is the variable that the unknown function depends on. So I can solve this and I get, as usual with these solve functions, a list of substitution rules, a list of solutions, each of which is a list of substitution rules. To use that solution, as before, I use this slash dot notation. So I take the first and only solution of this, which is ants sub 1, and then I define a function based on it. Uh, in this way. And so here is how I define a function with this x underscore notation to indicate that x in this line here is the argument of a function I am defining. So it echoes back the definition. I can now plot this function to see what the solution looks like. And it is indeed zero at the two boundaries as the boundary condition enforced and hotter in the middle as you might expect where the heat is being dumped in. We can solve this equation again, this time with an insulating boundary condition at the left end. So I replace the boundary condition t of 0 equals 0 with the boundary condition that the derivative is 0 there. And by fixed law, if the derivative is 0, it means there's no flux of heat at that point. This changes the shape of the solution, as we'll see when we plot it. So I define the function again using this solution and plot again. And now I find that indeed the temperature profile is different from before and is flat on the left end of the rod because now that end is insulated, heat can't get out that way, and so that end gets hot. So now I want to introduce different notations for writing derivatives in Mathematica that you need for writing and solving partial differential equations. When you're solving ordinary differential equations, the function like t of x is only a function of one variable, and so you can use primes to indicate differentiation. And so the second derivative uh, of some function g is just written with primes. But if you have a function of more than one variable, you can't use primes to indicate derivatives with respect to its different uh, arguments. So for example, I define a function f which is x squared y squared, and now if I want to take the second derivative with respect to x, 
how do I write that? Well, one way of writing it is like this. Um, d of the function x and y with respect to x two times. And that gives the expected result 2y squared. If I want a mixed partial, one derivative with respect to x and one with respect to y, I write it like this. And I get the expected result 4xy. In partial differential equations, it turns out that you sometimes need to write derivative boundary conditions. You need to write an expression for the derivative of a function with respect to some variable evaluated at some place. And that is complicated even to write with an expression like this. And so we resort to yet another notation for writing such derivatives. So, for example, we want to write the x derivative of f evaluated at the point x naught, y naught. How do you write that? And here's how you do it. Derivative once with respect to the first argument, no times with respect to the second argument, of f evaluated at the place x naught, y naught. And that produces the result expected to x naught, y naught squared. Because one derivative with respect to x takes this x squared here and turns it into 2x and then we evaluate the thing and get 2x naught y naught squared. And we'll see in a moment why we need this notation. So now we're going to consider the solution of a partial differential equation using n d solve, the numerical version of d solve. And this equation has to do with thermal conductivity in a rod or in a 1D slab um, described by this time-dependent uh, differential equation. The boundary conditions in this particular case are going to be that on one end of the rod the temperature is being oscillated up and down with time and on the other end of the rod, it's insulated, so the flux out that end is fixed. The initial condition will be the temperature on the rod is zero, in other words, equal to some reference temperature that we're measuring temperature with respect to. And our equation is the time derivative of T is equal to 2 times the space derivatives of T. That's the time-dependent heat equation where we've chosen units of time in such a way that we don't have to write the thermal conductivity. Um, for details about how we scale the equation, you can read this section of text, but for the purposes of illustrating how Mathematica solves these equations, it suffices to say this is our differential equation. These are our boundary conditions on the left end of the rod and on the right end of the rod, and they are true for all values of time, so that is a boundary condition at x equals 0 for all t, and this is a boundary condition at x equals 1 for all t, and this is an initial condition which says that the temperature is 0 at all x for 0 time, which is the initial time. This is the function we are solving for, and this is the range of the variables t and x that we're solving for. And we have to give that range whenever we do a numerical uh, solution of a differential equation. Just as we did for ODEs, we have to do that for PDEs too. So we're specifying the range of times and x's for which we're solving the equation. If we do that and execute it, then we get, as we got for the ODE example, an interpolating function, which is now a function of t and x both. And we can store that as a function that we can use later in the usual way. Now I can plot that function, and to plot a function of more than one variable, if it's two variables, I can make a 3D plot. So I give the range of both the times and the x values that I want to see, and then choose values of the options to make a decent looking plot. And I get something like this. So this is the time axis. This is the start of time over here, and time is progressing this way. This is the space axis. 
This side is the left end of the rod where the temperature is being swung back and forth, and this is the right end of the rod at x equals 1, which has the insulating boundary condition where the slope of this function has to be forever flat. So the function is coming in flat to this side. And this shows the time and space dependent profile of the temperature as the uh, left end of the rod oscillates up and down, hot, cold, hot, cold. Now we might want to ask about the heat flux into the rod, or into the slab, whatever it is, uh, on this left end. So you're swinging the temperature, but how much heat is going in and coming out and going in and coming out and going in and coming out as you swing the temperature up and down? And so we can use Fick's law to calculate that. Here is the derivative with respect to space at the left end of the rod for all times minus that derivative, because Fick's law says the flux is minus, proportional to minus the derivative. And I can plot that thing as a function of time with options to make a decent looking plot. And I find that as we can see qualitatively here, when the left end of the rod is hot, heat flows in and the heat flux is high. When the left end of the rod is cold, heat flows back out again and the flux is negative in, out, in, out, and so forth as the uh, heat uh, flows in and out as the temperature swings up and down.